All right, welcome everyone. My name is Paula Phillips, also known as Journal Artista. It stands so Saturday over on the Journal Artista channel here on YouTube. It's 9 p.m. Eastern time. I start uh, a pre-chat at 9 o'clock and I start to do some art about 9.30. Let's do some work over here. Simon, yep. can you turn on the TV a bit, please? All right, sorry about that. Hi, Ali. Hey, Cheryl. Hi, Diana. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Vicky. Good to see everybody. So after I stopped streaming yesterday, let me tell you, my friends, it took me 10 minutes to find my phone. <laughs> it, got, it fell and got lost in the stuff, but I didn't know you could Google. Simon told me, he's like, Google it, how to find your phone, because I have a Google, <clears throat> I have an Android, and uh, sure enough, even though my ringer was silent, I was able to find my phone. All right, I'm going to switch my heat gun over from that one to this one. Let's see, am I going to unplug a light? Yep, wrong one. All right, it's going to be this one then. Oh, oh, oh boy, hair dryer, all right, so if you saw the title, I have had, and, and I know it's because I didn't drink enough water yesterday, I've had a headache all day, but we are here, so I took an Advil, I drank water, I had a nap today, so let's hope, it's good. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Shauna. Hi, April. Welcome, Michelle. Hi, Debbie. So I figured you guys have seen me. I want to do some jelly plating. I need to make some new prints. I really haven't jelly plated in years, right? So I've got cards. I actually found today. A ream of cardstock, ninety. I think it's ninety pound. Uh, it was actually in my bedroom. Like I said, I have art supplies all over my house, so I do have some cardstock. Plus, I have some thinner paper, which I think is the stuff I bought for. Um, I think it's the HP laser jet stuff. Maybe it's super. It's super white and super smooth. I think it was for when I bought it for brush lettering. So I have some paper there. We're we'll use some of this because you know jelly plating on white. Anyways, you guys, I do a lot of crusty bits. You've seen this particular technique a million times. So tonight I figured I'd you know relinquish some control and have you guys tell me how to jelly plate. I know since I've been gone the past you know or not so active in the past little while, you guys are using sprays. You're using paint pens i mean i don't want to damage my plate <laughs> but i'm willing to take suggestions <laughs> uh oh diana's got a phone call hey carrie so as i figure we're gonna do it tonight maybe we'll do some crusty bits but you know i'm just gonna jelly plate i want to make some prints that are unlike you know how i normally print hey zandra Maybe we'll, where is he? Um, hmm, where would I have put my, I put my rice paper somewhere safe? <laughs> All right. That up there is not it. Is it under here? So just get. So 
I'm pretty, I mean, I have lots of stuff, so I should be able to have the products or whatever, you guys. I hope that sounds like fun. I know you guys love telling people what to do. <laughs> I'll get out a piece of deli paper from my bottom. My poor plate. I'm going to, I'll do a, try to do it. I'm going to print off it right now. Sorry if this is loud, my friends. I'm standing up. My bad boys. <laughs> Hurting, look at that. Let us see. Take a... We'll find the glaze. I'll just take it off with this. What do I got here? Yellow ochre. Golden glaze. I just take, pull a sheet. See if I can clean my plate a little. Hmm. Hold the fort. I haven't used this in a long time. Thank you, Debbie. I missed you today. I've got a crusty. I've got a not not the type of crusty bit I like somewhere in here. Where's my pokey tool? Maybe my uh, this glaze or not? Sorry, it's not a glaze. It's a fluid acrylic. Um, maybe it's not so fluid anymore. <laughs> I should have laughed. It's not funny. This is. This is golden. This stuff, see, this stuff isn't cheap. Hey, Laura. I know you. Oh, you. It was just uh, when you were saying yesterday. It was just impromptu. Okay, so that's uh. Already, I know too thick of a layer of paint. I can already tell. I'm just trying to clean my plate. We haven't started yet. Hi, hey, Sin. Yeah, golden chunky. All right. Can you try to write something backwards in the first layer? Sure can. So I don't think a lot of this. Oh, no. Okay, so how not? I just dug my finger in that. Bad news already. Not off to a good start. <laughs> Hi, Glenda. Good to see you, my friend. Oh, boy. Look at that. It almost looks like... Uh... <laughs> what oh, it's going to be one of those nights. It's going to be one of them. Actually, well, there's some texture on here, so I'm going to... Well, not with the heat gun. I'm going to dry it. So did I, who watched the launch today? That was exciting. Simon and I watched it. SpaceX. Hair dryer. It was pretty cool. I, I learned some stuff today. And then, hey, Kathy. Hi, hey, Gina. This is definitely mustard. <laughs> Yellow ochre. So then it reminded me of, uh, you know, I grew up, I was born in 78, but I was an 80s kid, right? So there was that song. Is it called Major Tom? Not the Bowie edition. The, uh, let me see. It was a cover of the Bowie. His name was Peter Schilling, I think. So anyways, so I started listening to that again because I've always loved that song. I don't know what, it just, I've always liked it. So then, you know, I started researching that, which led me to Bowie. So I started researching his reasons behind the song. That was really interesting. Then it led me to Chris Hatfield, which is a Canadian, who, who, not which, excuse me, who is a Canadian astronaut that did a cover of, uh, 
of the original saga, dang it, Space Oddity. So then I was, then it led me to a TED talk by Chris Hadfield about, um, you know, what, during one of his space walks, he was blinded, like there's some, something in his eye and, you know, about overcoming fears and stuff. So that was super interesting. But then, it, then that led me to another video about Chris Hadfield and about the last time he was in space and his mission, like, obviously he was, he was talking about, he was doing scientific stuff, but he was doing, it was about education, right? He would stream live to, you know, hundreds of thousands of Canadian well, probably all over the world, but it was in a lot of uh, Canadian schools and stuff. But he did the cover of the Bowie song, changed the lyrics a little bit, did the first music video in space. But then it was, he, then it was a whole talk. I was watching another video where he was talking about how, you know, how he wanted to show the, uh, like how beautiful the earth is from, from, you know, to take pictures, to, to, to bring art from, anyways, it was awesome. What, what a rabbit trail I went on today with the major Tom stuff. So I got to do a page about that. It was very interesting. And it, it touched, I mean, obviously it touched, touched me in different ways. It was, you know, why originally how, Bo why Bowie sang it. And then, you know, how major Tom, I, and then I listened to all the other four or five songs that, you know, that Bowie wrote that referenced major Tom and interesting. Hey, Tracy. So I listen, but the yeah. Uh, so now Chris Hadfield. So when he came out with his book, he has a book, right? So talk about how he took pictures in space, and it's called Chris Hadfield's. Oh, and just sending me a message. You are here around the world in ninety-two minutes. Now I need me this book after watch after reading all. Reading all about that today, I spent a good hour, from one place to another. But anyway. That was my day today. Hair dryer. Well, not the whole day, but. Hey, Cheryl. I'm drying this on the cool setting. But look at that cool texture for it looks almost like leather. I'm going to pull it with this cream just because it's here. Anyways, what an interesting morning I had, or afternoon, I suppose, watching that. And then Like, that's got to be, because, you know, there was a, his TED Talk was super interesting because, you know, like, <laughs> when you think about fear, like, man, going into space has to be, like, the absolute da most dangerous, scariest thing you can do. Like, there's absolutely nothing or no one that can save you when you're up there, that's for sure. So, pretty amazing stuff. All right, so I'm taking all this paint off to make sure I have a thin enough layer now to be able to pick everything up. Let us hope. I can't write backwards. Where's Eileen? Is my mini fly swatter. Catalyst tool. Remember when we found, I found these catalyst tools before they became super popular? We we're like, well, I was like, what the heck is this? Eileen D named it my mini fly swatter. <laughs> Hi, Eileen. Everybody, my friends, Quilty is our angel bug, Cheryl. Sorry, calling you out there, Cheryl. Calling you out. <laughs> Just so the Hi, Jane. Just for those of us that have been around for the Ustream names. All right. 
but I, I really do need to make some fresh deli prints. I haven't made it, you know, very many in, in years, really, right? And, uh, you know, there's lots of things I haven't tried on my plate that you guys have. Hi, Gilly. <laughs> Call you out, Cheryl. All right, let's take a peek and see if I'm um, coming off. It is. My stencils. I have some texture tools. I get, you know, some stuff. So I've got lots of stuff around me. I might have to bust out some hand sanitizer. I've been trying not to use it for my plate, but I just might have to. You can't see anything that I wrote on that. Some cool texture. I love what's going on. Definitely can't see anything I wrote. I'm going to put another layer on top of that. Let us see. Let us see. We haven't even gotten started yet, but I can't stop. <laughs> I can't stop. And again, tonight, we're going to be using our Liquitex, my Liquitex Basics set here. Trying to use it up is our goal. All right. I'm going to, let's try something. We are, like I said, we haven't started yet, but uh, I'm just having fun. Plus, I need some jelly prints for other projects I have on the go. So I have had some uh, comments about why I removed the... I might actually take the whole video down, to be honest. My last... Yeah, yesterday's video, my niece entered the chat. And I, I just... Uh, which I love. I love. But it was her real name. So I just got to keep that that type of stuff private because again you never know who's watching and you know it could be a scary world out there i don't know if cynthia's in chat yet what am i doing i'm chatting away letting this do its oh sweet goodness how not to jelly plate my friends how not chatting away letting my stuff dry on the plate perfect perfect I'm getting some uh, matching paper. Yeah, my niece is uh, young. All right. I smushed her up. I mostly did that just to get the texture, not for the pull. All right, let me dry this on my plate. So let's see, this time I'll take it off. And if it's not completely dry, so it's not going to clean my plate. All these crusty bits now have crusty bits. We'll use this unbleached Liquitex Basics unbleached titanium again. See if we can clean it. If not, I might have to go get some hand sanitizer. I don't think I have any packing tape close. Deli paper. Welcome, Sherry. The cherry. Hi, Patty. All right. Let's try not to put a hole in it this time with my fingers. 
So even though I had a headache, I drank some coffee. Uh, let's hope. <laughs> Everything is good. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to have to. It's not it's not pulling these crusty bits that are on crusty bits that have been on that plate for uh, too much too long. It has some beautiful textures. This is like reminds me of like water. That's a good base for something. That's that's beautiful. I like it. Different. All right, guys. I'm going to go, before we start, take a little last little nature break. Get my hand sanitizer and clean my plate. And I shall be back in two moments. I'm just in time to get started at 9.30. Patty's trying to get <laughs> a perfectly patty. Patty's trying to get me to do ICAD. Everybody knows. I, I mean, ICAD's 10 years old. I'm sure I tried to start it 10 years ago, and I was thinking about that. I was trying to think of what blog did I have. 10 years ago, I was using Flickr. I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out, you know, did I keep those cards? I've. Everybody knows I am the worst, the worst at prompts. Hands up if you're with me. <laughs> I love the prompts. I want to do it, whatever. And I get, and no matter what it is, whether it's Inktober, any of these things, I get all excited and I do it for about five days and then that's it. <laughs> Am I the only one? I'm the only one. But it's a special, it's a 10 year anniversary of ICAD, right? And, and Index Card a Day, like ICAD has been, like I said, been around uh, uh, as long as I've been doing this, same 10 year anniversary. So maybe, maybe it's definitely something I need to do. 10 years later, <laughs> I know, and I know you don't have to do the prompts. It's not even about the prompts, right, necessarily, because that's just hopefully a guy. But no matter what it is, the, the daily books, the, uh, I'm the worst. I'm the worst. I get excited. And that's, uh, anyway, give me two minutes, my friends. I'll be back, right back. Get my, what, what did I say I was getting? Hand sanitizer. And all right, be right back, and then we'll get started. Glenda's been doing iCatch, she's been doing it for five years. Oh, that's wonderful. If I work it a little longer, the bits will come off, especially if you will. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could use my hand and continue to do this. So, but we'll be here all night picking off crusty bits off my plate. <laughs> be right back, my friends. All right, should have asked Simon to get it. <laughs> it would have been faster. Sorry about that. iCAD is index card a day. It's something that Daisy Le Yellow, which is Gypsy six, Gypsy nine nine nine, I think, on Instagram and Twitter. And Instagram, Gypsy999. So 
so the premise is, is that you create art on an index card every day. And Daisy Yellow gives you prompts. There's weekly themes I just saw, which is a newer thing. So how fun is that? And and what's it like? If you look at other years, my friends, it, I mean, like I said, this is year number ten. So, um, oh, to see like people's completed cards and how they store them, and lots of fun inspiration out there in regards to index cards. And I have lots of index cards. I have some right beside me around here as well on my table, anyways, but. I hate to commit to something like that and, and like especially right now where I'm trying to work through cognitive behavior therapy and do you know I've been thinking a lot lately there's so much information and inspiration out there it's almost like paralyzing right you don't know what to do because there's so many people telling you to do that oh someone's telling you to jelly plate and then even me let's just take not everybody let's just take my channel one day I'm jelly plate next day I've got watercolors out the next day I've got that like it's overload you know what I mean? So I've been working on, I've been reading that bullet journal book and, uh, you know, thinking with it, like thinking about what I want to focus on, a couple different things rather than being all over the razor fries in place and never getting anything done because I've got too much on the go. Oh, right. Well, this, uh, at least it smells kind of nice, this Dollarama. There's some really bad crusty bits over here. All right. I had this big bottle of, uh, Of hand sanitizer in here from from before <laughs> I think it, it's just gel all I think all the alcohol evaporated out of it because it's been in my room for a couple years and now it's just gel all right let's see this is a paper towel like hopefully it won't leave too many fibers on my plate what is this? I just looked down. Is this baby oil? Hold the fort. Look at that. It is. Dollarama baby oil. Should I put baby oil on my plate after this? After I wipe it all off? I'm sure that's why I would have bought it. Something to do with my jelly plate. I just happened to look down. I'm like, oh, this is a clear bottle. What else would be in there? A poor plate. So you can see, and this is the 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 back of this plate is just as bad as the front. So everything you see now underneath, it's all that's the crusty bits from the other side. On the other side, like I said before, I have not taken care of my plate very well. It's all my all me. It's all me. Not cleaning it, not storing it properly. So there's like dents and probably scratches and all matters of <laughs> for ephemera. <laughs> like it's a... All right. Hi, Judy. It is not. I swear I heard that baby oil is good for the plate. I'm pretty sure. I mean, remember just the other day, um, Patty Tolly Parish Patty, she bought the primer, the, or what did she call it? Conditioner. I mean, it's odd. There's, I can't think of any other reason why I would have bought baby oil other than for my jelly plate. Let's see. 
So we wiped it down. You can't tell. It's it's as clean as it's getting. The, the top is clean. What you all these pieces you're seeing that's on the bottom of the plate. So I'll put a tiny bit on. See what happens. Got a loop. Whoop! Oh, okay. Lubing her up. Look how look at it's definitely making it clearer. Now again, all you see now you can really see underneath all my uh the, the back side of my plate. It feels good too. <laughs> you should try this. <laughs> it feels good. I'm gonna massage my jelly plate. Welcome to the journal artista channel. You never know what's gonna happen. There's a few crusty bits. I'm, I'm shocked at how clear it made my plate. Like if I clean the other side, like this, maybe we could have like a brand new plate over here. My tan comes naturally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Back in the, back in the day when I was early teenager, like I can remember I never used baby oil though. I always used uh, if I was sun tanning, you know, before we all knew what it was, how bad it was. I would sit on my dad's boat in, uh, on the bow, but I would use I use the copper tone stuff, like the two the copper tone that has like the two on it. Hi, Eileen. Two SPF, which is like nothing. It should be like negative. I love the smell of that. That that the smell of the copper tone stuff. Copper tone tanning oil bring will bring back bring back memories. Oh, there was some green left on this. All right. Okay. Now that everything's slippery and looped up, should I? Oh my word. Baby oil is recommended to remove stains on the plate. Well, yeah, I mean, look at how clear it made my plate. I'm shocked. I don't think I ever used it. It's slippery. Oh my word, my brayer's gonna be flying out of my hands. Oh sweet goodness. All right. Should I just put paint down and take a quick? Yeah, let's put some craft paint down here and see what. Let's see what happens and pull a print off of it. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Judy has a tip for me. Uh-oh. Hey, Darcy. Darcy did some reverse crusty bits. Sounds good to me. Happy Stencil Saturday, my friends. Hopefully you're out there doing some art yourself. Let's see. Look, Eileen. Mini fly swatter. My apologies if that was loud. Still no update on my computer. Man, oh man. Like, I'm starting to get Again, it's just the lack of one, two, three, communication. Like, is the order still good? Like, it's, I don't know. It makes me wonder if they're waiting for a shipment from China, which we all know is not necessarily happening. All right. Let's see. So before we did this, I'm just going to put this on one half. That is not the right color, so we'll just flip it over on this side. I'm just taking a pull off of here. See how the baby oil works. Hi, Carrie Ann. No better place to be than here. My humble opinion, or not so humble opinion. <laughs> all right. So if you just got here, I, I talked about I've had a headache all day. So. And I have some projects I need some fresh jelly prints for. So, 
Look how nicely that came off the plate. Lube works, my friends. <laughs> Lube works. <laughs> see what's on over here so i thought like i said you guys have you know how i jelly plate i like to do my three layer crusty bit process so let me i'd like to know what your favorite medium or way to jelly plate is i got covered up well should never i'm never afraid to cover up anything that i like but that didn't add very much to it because you keep that there Should we warm up? We'll warm up with my way of jelly plating, and then I'll hand it over to you guys. I will start with white, though, first, this time instead of black, I think. I did have, so if you remember, this is a, this is a Foxy Dory. A, uh, so wait, this, this Foxy Dory holds the size of, what is this, guys, A5 or A6? The size of the Moly Kayes. I, lo I love, this is one of my favorite Foxy Dories. I, so I have, in this one, I have four Moly Kayes of different kinds. But years ago, when we did a whole bunch, some of my favorite jelly plates, we did a jelly plate session and I wrote down some of the favorite, you know, three, three color combos. So one of the ones we use, one of my, our favorite was, ah, let's see. Black, bright aqua green, black, brilliant purple, and silver. Ooh, I remember doing that. Pulling the, the last one with silver. Let's do that. Black, brilliant green, and silver. I need to get my black paint. Do, 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 do. Sorry, that major time is going to be in my head now the entire night. It's a little bit of Liquitex Basics Black. I've got my stencils ready to go right here, although I don't have any paper ready to go. These are my stencils from stencilgirlproducts.com. Take off. I'm just doing light on uh, that to try to get Try to just get some texture on the back of that one. And then we'll use this. So this, what I'm doing right now with the black, right? It's not, uh, I don't usually use these, these papers for anything. They're just kind of a, byproduct of byproduct of this technique but it's fun I mean don't get me wrong if you you can add some fun layers to that I pressed it lightly there uh -huh, look at my stacked books I love when the stacked books gets the texture like that that old you know reminds me of like leather old leather type of texture all right let's put this away or I'll be swinging it and pointing it off freaking night. So again, we don't want to use a heat gun on our plate or anything hot. So I have a hair dryer that has a cool button. Thanks, Jane. Can I use normal paper? Or does deli paper work better? Well, for for my crust, like so, these crusty bits. When I pull deli paper, works well, or or uh, masking paper, whatever kind of cheap paper you got going on to do to take off your these intermediate layers, but my final pull will pull on white cardstock and you'll see the difference. When we pulled, when we did this technique the other night, uh, well, last, was it last Wednesday? Not this past Wednesday, the Wednesday before. Anyways, when we were using like brown paper or the green paper, you know, the uh, 
paint doesn't show up. It shows up differently. So when I pull tonight, I'll be pulling on white cardstock and white, uh, white, I think it's laser jet paper that I bought. It's HP. It was super expensive. Remember when we were all doing brush lettering and they suggested to use this fancy white, super, super smooth paper. I think it's laser jet paper. Heat gun. So there, it's, it's super bright. Oh, Darcy. So I'm using the cool button in BoxyCharm. I got the cutest little, uh, well, it was a few months ago. Well, probably around, anyways, it was actually in a Boxy Lux, probably September's Boxy Lux. Came with this little guy, look. But there's no uh I love them, but there's it there's no cool button or anything though. And it's super loud. It's only one speed. All right, just want to make sure it's I'm gonna have to clean my hands because already they're good. Very important though that this layer is dry. I can tell. I mean, that's the key with jelly plating, right? Is if, if the layer underneath is dry, it's not going to pick up. Which which is a good, you know. There's you can intentionally, um, you can create intentional prints that way, knowing that it's not going to pick. Like keeping stuff wet underneath will create a different effect. All right. Those words were hard. Okay, which one did I say? I was going to use black. I said silver, something in silver. I'm looking at my notes here, which one? Black, brilliant purple and silver. Okay, so brilliant purple is my middle layer. Let us find, I don't know if I have brilliant purple in, in my little, little set of Liquitex basics, so I might have to go to my paint cart here. Let's see, deep violet. And I think, uh, yeah, brilliant purple is one of my favorite Liquitex Basics colors. So it... I just have to get up and move over here one moment. Now the major Tom is in my head. And I try not to sing it. <laughs> all right, Liquitex Basics, brilliant purple. One of my all-time favorite colors. All right, let's. So before my second layer, when it for this crusty, as I like to call it, anyways, crusty bit technique. This. Ooh. Not pictures. Um. It's important that you're ready for this second layer. Like I, I've got to make sure I've got my stencils, which stencils I'm going to use already, because it's this middle layer is you have to be quick. Well, you never have to. There's no absolutes in art, but I want to be quick if I want a good. Let's see. Ooh. That stuck together. Some of these really need a bath badly. I think this is a crafter's workshop stencil. Ah, could be oh, it could be an artist seller one. Oh, this is a nice butterfly mask. Oh, we'll use that one. All right, let's use some old Crafters Workshop stuff while we're here. This for sure is Crafters Workshop. All right, as you can see, some of my stencils and masks need to be... Uh... <laughs> I should have laughed. All right, a little bit of Liquitex. Brilliant purple. Hi, Patricia, welcome. 
and as I said the other night, the, the hardest thing about jelly plating is controlling your paint, right? How much paint you got down on your plate. But uh, it's not even, it's not exactly, not necessarily hard is not the right word. It's fun. That's the, that's the joy of mono printing. You never know what you're going to get. And you're probably not going to be able to recreate it exactly the same again, ever again. All right, we have a little purple. I'm gonna throw these and these stencils in the middle layer for my crusty bits technique. I like to be and they're stuck together. I like them to be more uh, busy, shall we say? So, all right. ooh, layer this one here. I'm trying to be fast. Layer on the back of that bad boy. So in this layer, you want to be kind of fast. We don't want to pick up too much of the black. We want to pick up the purple, but not so much of the black. So I'm just going to take some. I'm just kind of barely touching it. All right, let's take, oops, my apologies for my autofocus. Take a, it's harder to take sneak peeks because my plate's dirty on the other side. So not the heat gun, we need the hair dryer. Yeah. My camera's pulsating, my apologies. Hair dryer. I'm working with Tim Holtz folio using the wallflower paper. Sounds oh, wonderful. Mid-century modern looking olives and toothpick. I don't know who Jane is. Oh, this is gonna hmm. what can we do so it doesn't like continue to pulsate like this? We put our random crap in there. We're going to try to focus on random crap. So again, really important that this layer is completely dry. If you want it to all come up off your plate, thanks. We don't use the H word here, Pauline. Hoarding. We we like to treasure over on the Journal Artista channel. We're not we're treasurers, not hoarders. <laughs> yes, my art room looks like an episode of Hoarders. But I'm really a treasurer. <laughs> Sometimes you'll hear the, the, the change in sound of my hair dryer. I kind of, I do let a little bit of heat come on it every once in a while. But it doesn't get hot, right? It just kind of, I let the heat go for a couple seconds and then put my finger back on it. All right, that looks good. So it said the last layer, my pickup layer is going to be... Okay, Mr. Thing of stencils. Are you gonna fall? Silver. Do I have silver in these tubes? I surely do. Quick basic silver. All right, I'm gonna pull this on cardstock. Actually, I'll pull one on cardstock and one on the, the paper, which I think, like I said, I wanna say that it's HP something super smooth super bright white all right we're gonna put some silver all 
let's hope that you know this paint is a little uh it's just a little old so let's hope it's not separated too much in the tubes i should be massaging the tubes before i uh put it down i suppose I'm trying to keep her face in there and maybe it'll help all right, so I'm going to have a nice even layer. Can you see them? Is my camera picking it up? I can still see the stencils underneath. So I'm going to lay it down. I'll do half. No, I want a whole sheet. This is the paper. And then I'll do a partial sheet of the cardstock. And then I just need a final piece. So there's an inch. Because it's 8.5 by 11 paper, and this is a... Uh, what is it, 12 by 14 plate? You got an inch at the top where there's nothing. So I just like to take that. So now this is where we give it a two minute massage, as I like to say. So I don't want to put a hole in my paper like I did on that first pull <laughs> earlier today when I was trying to clean my plate. Ooh, what is making that noise? Something squeaky. Thanks for the thumbs up, guys. I appreciate it. All right. So now look how clean my plate is there. Oh, well, let's hope it looks better on white. So see here? Not much going on. But we're using white. So let's hope... It's going to, the whiteness of the paper will make it brighter. I've got a little rip, ripple right there. This is worrying me. See see that? Not worrying is not the right word, but that's a, hmm. So I'm going down here and take a sneaky peek. Ah, oh, my camera pulsating. I'm going to have to make a decision on Monday whether to cancel the order, try and try to order a new computer somewhere else. So I take a sneak peek. I pull it up a little bit to make sure it's going to come off the, off my plate. Why does my camera all of a sudden look like super wonky? Did it move during my like like was I massaging my plate too hard and it moved my camera? <laughs> all right. So this is on the paper, which I think is twenty pound paper. I have to I have to look at the thing. Let's see. Look at those crusty bits. So I don't know if my camera's picking up the silver. It's absolutely beautiful. So it's a very dark print because the black, that first layer I did, I obviously, I didn't take up, I didn't pull up a lot of the black. So it's a very grungy print because there's so much black on that first layer. But I love how you can see the, in, in my coffee cups here on my uh, coffee stencil from stencilgirlproducts.com to see the butterfly from the crafters workshop stencil. All right, let's go over here. And then on this side, very cool. Ooh, look at that big thing. Ooh, we didn't have obviously wasn't dry there. So a very uh grungy print because of how much black we left on the plate. And even then you can't see a lot of the silver either because I left a lot of purple on the plate. Very fun, but on white, right? You're gonna get a much different look than if you're on a darker darker paper. Oh, there is a spider. Oh, uh, boy. Okay, at least I didn't scream this time. Excuse me. <laughs> it's gonna end up in my... Oh. oh, it's above my head. All right, nobody hate me. It's gonna rain tomorrow. All right, could be worse, could have been worse, could have been worse. 
no spiders were harmed in this jelly plate session. This over here, I think it's dry now. I won't probably won't be able to pick it up. All right, that's how I jelly plate. What do you guys want to see me do with the jelly plate? You like the grunginess? Oh, thanks, guys. No, I'm not jelly. He's gone. He's gone. He's chilling in a little container over there. <laughs> At least I didn't scream. Like, he was in my eyesight, like, above my computer. That one time, because I have terrible eyes. Like, I have zero peripheral vision. My friends, if you're standing beside me, I can't see a thing out the side of my eyes. So, <laughs> that one day when it was crawling up my my wall, it, it peeked on my peripheral vision and scared the crowds. I just saw something. <laughs> that time I kind of saw it. <laughs> oh, sweet goodness. Extra texture. <laughs> All right. One thing I don't do a lot while you guys are deciding, I'm going to use some craft paint that's in front of me. One thing I don't do a lot is uh, mix colors on plates, mix textures on plates. This is some old craft paint. There's a bubble in my plate. Probably more than one bubble in my plate. All right, let's see what we got going on over here. I have some. Oh, here's an old club scrap stamp I use as texture. Unmounted alphabet, which means that the letters are going to be backwards. How not to jelly plate? Oh, no. Take a little thing. Go to my cardstock over here. Another piece of cardstock. We'll add some layers to this. Letters are backwards. I am hot all of a sudden. <laughs> Whew. At least you don't have the attack of the Miller moths. We are invaded in Colorado. Miller moths. Are they ginormous? All right. So what? So I've got these two pages, right? What other kind of things can I do with my plate to build up some of these layers? With stencils, of course. This is a... Uh, Liquid Text Basics Primary Blue. Let me add some black over here. I don't know. If, if for me, like when it comes to jelly plating. I end up going back to what I know and, and what I'm comfortable doing. So sure, here in a moment, if, if nobody gives me any uh, direction, I'm just going to continue to do what I normally do. This is a uh, artist seller stencil. Oh, too much, too much junk over here. Have a good night, Christy. Let's see what this one up here. Well, I should be watching is some Julie Faith Van Balzer videos. 
I know she's been doing a jelly plate. I see them on Instagram. She's been doing one uh, jelly plate a day. And there's lots of them. Ding, ding. Interesting. Even more interesting. I'm going to let that... See, I'm going to let it dry my plate. I have to let it dry my plate. Old habits are hard to... Maybe I'll work on something over here then. Let's add the purple. Kathy wants to use some foamy stamp. That's one thing I don't have a lot of. Well, I mean, I have my own hand. Oh, what's this piece of? The, I only have one uh, art for me, which happens to be a Julie Faye Van Balser one. But I do have some of my hand, uh, my cutout ones that I did. It's always good to have something to the side. Let's see. I'm doing this off, stamp it off here. No matter how big my, I, I have a table that's what, my friends, three by six feet or something. It's never big enough. It's never big enough. So I got a little bit of something over here. Let's see. Where is that other catalyst tool I have? I have this one from years ago. So the my crusty bit tech technique is very intentional, right? Like I I'm intentionally creating something. This is just like <laughs> Throw and paint down and see what happens, which is outside of my comfort zone. I'm going to get a piece of oh, masking paper. This stuff is cool. I, I could, this stuff is awesome. So some of the parts of the plate is, is dry already. Let me just pull up a little bit over here. See what we get. Interesting. Like what's going on there. I'm going to dry this. Well, see, that goes against what I'm trying to do. But if then it doesn't, I'm talking about stuff. Let's drink some, <laughs> some pop while we're thinking about it. Oh, yeah. If you want to talk to me about, hi, Debbie. Good to see you. If you're talking to me, put it in caps. The bigger the table, the more stuff. Yeah, exactly. I end up having a 12 by 12. How did you... But Kathy, how did... Kathy Arbor says she uses Pam Pastel on her plate. How did you put it on? On a plain plate? I'm going to have to watch some videos before. I know you guys have been using sprays. Years ago, I, I tried sprayed that one time, and it didn't go so well. Like, I... But why not? I mean, we've got some stuff here. This is a Mary Beth Shaw stencil from Stencil Girls. Very, very well loved. Let's see. I'll put that down. We'll take the... Hmm. What colors do I have going on here? Blue and purple. We'll find a blue spray. Let's see. I'll spray some Tim Holtz Distress Spray Stain through this. See what happens. put this stencil in a journal over maybe not oh. too much stuff are you supposed to let it dry you don't know I'm just going to take this and see what happens touch it down
again, how not to jelly plate. So I, I did a technique video years ago for Stencil Girl products uh, where I used sprays, but the spray was on my page already, right? So I transferred the spray from my page to the plate and then back on another page, right? So I didn't directly spray the, the, the plate for that technique. Some ink pads. I definitely have some of those lying around. So I sprayed. Let's see. I'm going to dry it and then see what happens. And I'll pull it with... I, know, I mean, I know what's going to happen. And my next paint layer should move this, right? Here, dryer. Like if I spread out white paint on top of this right now, or any color of paint, the spray should come up through it, right? Oh, if the spray it looks like it's beating up. Elizabeth, I didn't know you were you were friends with Debbie in real life. As you know, Debbie is my oldest friend. <laughs> <laughs> Not in age wise. In uh, we went. Uh, I first met Debbie at a club scrap retreat back in two thousand and two or three, whichever one. All right, I am going to. Should I? What should we do, guys? Should I put some more layers on, or should I pick? Try to pick this up with a color now. Look at how wet it is over there. I think I'm just going to roll out some cream and see what happens with that little spray over there. Oh, it's already coming up through that. So I figure if I, I'm going to, uh, I'm worried that I will spread it all around the plate. You know what, you know what I mean, Vern? I can definitely see Mary Beth Shaw's stencil coming through there. This isn't going to pick up over there because that purple paint was not dry. All right, I'll use the other side of these papers. Let's see what happens. Like this. You saw her when she was in a scrapbook magazine? Do we remember that? Well, and it was club scrap stuff too, Elizabeth. I remember it was in uh, uh, Making Memories. I think she was. Debbie, were you publishing CK? I'm pretty sure you were publishing Making Memories. Uh, club scrap stuff too. And I would have them at the, the dark side of my room. No smelly chemicals tonight, Debbie, that is for sure. No scary chemicals tonight. <laughs> you was getting you were getting ready to watch Mortal Kombat on Netflix. That sounds like Simon's kind of movie. Hi, Pam. Can I pick it up? Well, Diana, uh, I don't know if you remember when I was cleaning my room that day, I had to throw out my whole room of black cardstock because it had water damage. So I don't have any axe. Uh, let's think. What do I have any? But absolutely, absolutely pick it up with black. I need to buy some black card stock. It's, it's on the list with all, a bunch of other things. So, yeah, there. So I'm still giving it a 
two minute massage. Oh, did, was it a good one, Pam? Sounds wonderful. Coming back from a Seth after. Well, that's wonderful, Elizabeth. Like I said, every once in a while, I like to bust out my club scrap around Robin and show Debbie's work from 2003. <laughs> oh, look at that muddy mess. Well, I shouldn't say it's a muddy mess. It's interesting. Actually, kind of, the more I look at it up close, the kind of cool it is. Like, cooler it looks. Like, there's very interesting. Part of that stencil. Part of the, from the cat, the texture from the catalyst tool, some foamy stamp texture. That's actually kind of nice. It's actually kind of nice when I look at it. This blue, I don't know. I don't know if I'm liking what's going on, on this side of the page. Well, I take it back. All right, let's see what we got. Ooh, some yum old crusty bits on this bad boy from that original thing. So where is the spray, my friends? Does anyone, I'm looking at it. Does anyone see the spray? I have, how did I even pull it off? The spray was blue, so that maybe was a, not the best choice because, okay, camera focus. There's some crusty bits. But does anyone see the spray? Hold it down here. What I'm looking for, so the, the stencil I used, the Mary Beth Shaw one looks like this. And I, I mean, I see the, the main image of the artist seller stencil, but, but does anyone see any, I can't see any spray anywhere. <laughs> I did it wrong. <laughs> the spray, I, I guess it did mix in with the white paint, which was, well, with, with uh, excuse me, unbleached titanium. So it's harder to tell. Yeah, I guess if I actually used Judy Wright, if I used the white paint, it might be easier to tell where the paint mixed with the spray, but I used uh, unbleached titanium. I actually really like that. That's different. Some fun textures on that bad boy. My plate is pretty clean. All right, somebody give me some instruction. We all, I do, do, can you use distress oxide? What happens if you use distress oxide on your butt? Thanks, guys. I don't know. I've never used it on my plate. Let's see. I stamp it. What could, what's the worst that could happen? Well, the worst that could happen is I damage my, we don't, we don't want to damage my oxide pads. Especially if I get, I don't want to get paint on it. There's some paint already. I don't want to pull up any crusty bits and get it on my pad. Now, I, now my friends, I have zero ideas what I'm doing. So <laughs> enjoy the ride. I don't know. I'm going to spray some peacock feathers on it while I'm at it. Then I'm going to throw down this. Let's, let's throw down my stencils from Stencil Girl Products. Drink some coffee, coffee, please. I think, where's my water? I'll spray a little water. Don't you know what I'm doing? Take some cardstock. Oh, actually, I'll take the, instead of cardstock, I'll use the paper. Again, no idea what I look at. Oh, that's oh, that's looking interesting. It's looking interesting on that side of the paper. Let's see. 
see. Brayer at first. Oh, well, that I should have done that. I should have looked up at the chat before I did that. Some interesting. This could be interesting. But that's the fun about mono printing, my friends. You never know what you're going to get. I'm a little, who's nervous? I'm a little nervous. So the distress oxide stayed in a relatively square pattern. Stayed the shape of the pad. And what I'm trying to say. I actually like the... Is juxtaposition the right word? I like the way it lo the square looks with my coffee cups. <laughs> oh, man. Thank goodness I'm reading more of my grammar. Sweet love and goodness. Drink some coffee, Paula. So, now I'm curious. Because distress oxide moves, right? So, I'm going to take... Well, I've got this one going, and I have this one. I'm going to just spray... Just for research, I'm going to go over here and then just drip some water on it. Little spots. I put my finger over the spout. Get some spots. Put it off to the side and see what happens. No bleach today, I promise, my friends. No bleach today. But I do want to dry this a little bit because I don't know if you can see, probably not, because my plate's so dirty on the other side. You can still see where there's some some bits on there from my stencil. Should I dry it or should I just take another piece of paper and, and pick the rest of it up? Hmm. I don't know. Let's just take a piece of paper and see. Take a... Ooh, nice. We can see it, it, where it's beating up. Now, I don't know if it beads up like that. All the, Well, I mean, it's water against it. <laughs> Anyways, you know what I mean, Bert, but I wonder if it, because I, I use the baby oil, if it changes it. It's obviously going to beat up on the paper, you know, no matter what, because... Let's see. I'll do on the back side of this one, maybe. I like to use these pages in books and collage and stuff. So I, I do print on both sides. So it's definitely... Uh, but I guess no matter when you use sprays on your plate, it's going to beat up, right? It will beat up for a bit, then stop. If you heat it up, yeah, it's printed. Do the distress pads again, but brayer them. All right, Judy. I shall. Let us see. We have Mermaid Lagoon. Should I add some regular distress pads in here too, not just the oxides? This is picked raspberry. Let us let us see. Oh, uh, my ink pads are. Ding, 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 ding. Which one's colors do I have over here of the Adirondack ones? Raisin, terracotta. Not exactly the right color. Same type of color schemes. Oregano. Oh, I have an old fresco pad. Stampa Rosa. Yeah, it's not coming off on the plate. And oregano. Let's add some raisin, why don't we? Just at the top over here. So it's a very bright, very, not a bright color, rich color. No idea what I'm doing, my friends. No idea. So, am I supposed to 
Oh, she just said brayer it. I'll brayer it first. Should I use a different brayer that doesn't have paint on it? Hmm. Hmm. I'll just take a quick baby wipe to it just in case. I like what's happening here with the paint splatters. All right, we're moving it. I didn't spray it. Now, did I just put it all on my brayer and now it's not on the plate? Doesn't it look like it just all went on my brayer? Let me see. One moment, I'll find a piece of paper over here. Well, you made a mess of it. Hmm. I'm going to spray through a different stencil. Let's see. This is an old, another old crafter's workshop stencil. I'm just going to spray some water through this. It's going to beat up. Throw down some paper, piece of cardstock over here. I don't know if we're going to get anything off of this. Well, I guess we're going to get some type of background, but Judy tells me it'll, I'll be surprised how much is on the plate. All right, let us see. I don't know, am I supposed to? Well, I guess there's no supposed to, so I've got to stop asking that. Well, definitely lots of color on there. Oh, look at what the, the oxide, let me spray this again. Look look at what's happening with the oxides. Okay, let me, let me focus it first. Interesting. Ooh, my camera doesn't like that, that's for sure. All right, I think what I'm gonna do, let me pull this one first. Hmm, I like the way that looks. Now it makes, it's making me think, think, think. Hey, Sherry. What's well, beating up? Can't see. I mean, you see texture, can't see much of that uh, stencil at all. It's more like just uh, it's texture. But let's put this, I'll put my plate off to the side for a moment. I'm just going to put the sheets like this was on cardstock, this is on paper. Just real quick, I'm going to take that same stencil, put it on top like this, spray. and see how much that's gonna move. Well, move's not the right word. React, how it will change. I'm just stamping it. Hmm. I'm gonna leave this off to the side and see if the oxides will do anything. Actually, I need, let's, let's, uh, so we have some water, let's see. I'm just gonna take my coffee stencil right in the middle. That was a Peacock Feathers Distress Spray Stain. Let's see what happens. I'm just gonna let it sit and, and do its thing. Let it oxidize, shall we say. interesting texture from the beating off the plate all right i'm gonna i need some splots some bigger splots i'm holding my finger against the thing Let's see what happens 
And what's interesting, what's going to be super interesting, and what, what happens when we add more layers on top of this? Because, you know, craft paint and all that's going to come up. It's going to come up through it. Or the ink is going to come up through the craft paint. Put these off to the side. I've got too many things on the side now. Hmm. I am going to try it with that one. All right, let's get our plate back up. I want to add some white paint. Let us find some white. Do I have white in my little my little guys? Very interesting texture going on. I don't think I have a white left. Nope. Unbleached titanium. Oh, there it is. I have some Loomis, or excuse me, Desairs. Just need a palette knife. You need a rope strung across your room and some clothespins to hang your creations. That's a good idea, Cheryl. Absolutely. Little clothesline, hang up my. Yeah, because that, that's the thing with jelly plating. I'm sure everybody has the same the same problems is that you end up with so many prints everywhere. This is a student grade acrylic. Using oxides in distress. Probably not enough paint. Let's see, add some there. Whoa. All right, there was definitely leftover ink on there. Look at that, my friends. Can you see it turning from the Adirondack ink pad? Well, I'm having fun. I don't know about anybody else. Ooh. I going to do what am I going to use let's see we'll use one of the embossed pieces of cardstock I got going on this is a an artist seller new Our seller is making embossing folders. Which embossing folder is this? That looks like a map. I was confused there for a moment because it reminded me of the art, you know, the artist seller city, like that stencil set of the maps. Let's see. I'm going to take some of this and add. I'll, I'll put it down here. I'll get a fresh piece of paper over here. Up top there. I think I'll add to this one over here. And then just a piece of deli paper down here. My apologies again, my friends, for my camera autofocusing. Unfortunately, I can't control my camera, and they're not shipping my computer. Anyway, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna complain about that tonight. I'm just gonna enjoy myself, making some jelly prints. Yeah, what, what embossing folder? Help me with that embossing folder. I mean, it has to be a Tim Holtz one, right? It's an, I mean, I haven't bought embossing folders in years, so uh, you know what? Did it come with this set that's right beside me? No, that was a... Oh, there goes the die. Yeah, it did! Framelets, texture fades, and stamps. It came with these Tim Holtz alterations. 
with this stamp set, the journey was called 56221 with the the world stamp and it was I'm pretty sure, right? Let me see. Nope, nope, that's not the embossing photo that comes with that. I lied. Yeah, that one's a world. That one's if you look close on this embossing folder. Come on. See that? See that in the background? In the dark background? That's the embossing folder that came with that. I lied. It must be a Tim Holtz one, no? All right, let's see what's going on here. Whole lot of nothing. Not a whole lot of nothing, but a whole, you know. It goes nicely with that. Uh, uh. Ooh, but it's a major crusty bit over there. Oh, yummo, look at this. So some of this color was from the ridge from those pads. There's something fun going on here. Let me stop looking at myself. I, here I am look enjoying it myself and not showing the camera. Let's see my camera. Focus, focus. How fun. I actually really like what's going on. It's very soft. You know, which is completely different than, say, the patterns on this one. And then that one doesn't look too good on top of other layers. Or it looks too similar, I suppose. Yeah, it's fun the way the embossing folders uh, work. And you can use the... the I mean, when I, first, <laughs> when I first thought of this... Um, using embossing folders on my jelly plate i used the do you remember that video the actual folder like i used the actual folder it was a stencil saturday and i and i had to clean all my folders <laughs> you remember like so many years ago and i was it carrie i think it was carrie that had the bright idea that she's like well why don't you just <laughs> die? why don't you just emboss some of them rather than using the actual <laughs> embossing folder but I, I mean i took the embossing folder right to the plate And then Carrie would use uh, use those uh, these pieces afterwards once they dried and after she you know after you used it so many times, then she would use that piece in her art. Man, I remember that video because I, I I literally had to run the bathtub and put all my embossing folders in the bathtub after it because I. Oh, man. I got. I like what's going on over here. So let's just add some layers. I think I'll add some, a little bit of black. Not a lot. Not across the whole plate. I'm just going to add. A little here, a little there. See what we can get. Now, one thing I, I don't do. Um. And that's not for any reason. It's just something I never got. How's, what, how am I trying to say this? It's just something I never... I was so involved in the crust. I enjoy making the Krusty Brits prints so much that I didn't play around too much with any other technique. For example, here's some Chevron stencil. I don't know where it came from. It's. I don't know if this is one maybe Jean printed out for me. Well, printed, cut on her machine. Not really print, I suppose. But one thing I've never done is put the stencil down and then brayer the paint over it. So let's see. I will add some. Back to my little thing. You emboss them on fun foam. That's a good idea, too. I have some of that. All right, let's see. This is uh, bright aqua green, one of my favorite colors. 
of Equitex Basics. Yeah, so I, I, I've I seen so many people put the stencil down and then brayer over it. So let's see. I've never done it before, I don't think. Or if I have, it was sure a long time ago. Don't know what I'm doing. I don't know, but put this over there. Maybe over here. No idea. Look at that. Should I pull it? Now let's take a sneaky peek over here. I'm going to pull in some spots. Let's see. So here's this cool looking thing over here. I'm just going to quickly down and up. Something over here, down and up. Not much going on. Ah, this one. Let's see. This. Back over here, maybe add a layer right in the middle. Yeah, though that's the middle, Paula. Top right. <laughs> oh, that nothing much happened there. A little dark. A little bit of something. The craft paint. I don't know. The craft paint gives a different look than the liquid text basics oh look how fun it's on my brayer will that come off a little bit <laughs> how fun was that <laughs> sorry i'm i'm tickling myself over here all right i'm gonna dry this though see if i can pick up some a nice pickup print with this Hey, Dre. Take a drink. It is messy, that's for sure, Debbie. Man. That's probably why I avoided doing it for so long. I like what's going on here though. I want to pull this. So what color guys should I pull this up? We have some white, we have some blue, we have the black. And I get it. My plate. I need to set a goal to clean my plate properly. Because it's so dirty on the other side. I can't take sneak peeks to see if I like what the what it's gonna look like. So we have the bright aqua green, some black here. So it, you know, because the black probably have to be a light color. Hi, Miko. Good to see ya. Making sure it's dry. Should we pull it with a contrast? It should put the medium magenta, a red. What should we do? What should we do? I'm going to pull it with a red and see what happens. Which one? Oh, it's a translucent primary red. It's a translucent color, so we'll see. Trying to use up the best way to use up paints is mono printing, that's for sure. I shouldn't say the best way. One of the one of the fastest ways to use up. Not the best. Well, maybe to you it is the best. Oh, well. Paint wants to come with me. 
So I'm just getting a thin layer on here. Make sure I'm spreading it out evenly. All right, nice thin layers. You can still see these lines over here. Again, I believe I can't. I actually don't know if this is 90 or the 110 pound cardstock. I'm just glad I found some cardstock. I don't know why I had another whole ream of it in my bedroom, <laughs> but I did. Magenta, quinacridone. <laughs> I like what's going on on this piece of deli paper, actually. This little corner here and all of that. It's fun. So we've... let's see. So when I when I pull these prints, like I'm 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 digging my fingers in. Like I'm not using my nails. Don't get me wrong, but I'm using the pads of my fingertips, and I'm really giving it a two minute massage. All right. Let's see. It's definitely grungy. I see a face. A kind of scary face, actually. <laughs> but I like it. Look at that. It looks like she's wearing... I just see, like, the mouth. It's kind of creepy. But it looks like I'm liking it. It's different than the intentional, like, you know, crusty bit where I'm intentionally creating... You know, the lines. That That's interesting. Who sees Do you see a face? <laughs> Debbie sees a puppy. I see, like, like a scary face. Like, this is her nose, and this is her mouth, and, a, and, oop, and one eye, and the other eye, and then, like, her hair, and this is, like, her dress. Like, she's looking down. Where Where's the puppy? You see a dog, and I see, like, a... <laughs> Let's see what happens. I like that, though. Like, honestly, I'm tempted just to... I need to put that in my art journal just as it is. Highlight some of the parts. But that I like that a lot, actually. All right. Let's, ooh, we got some interesting ones on this. Raggedy Andy. That's right. Raggedy Andy and Andy. That's kind of the hair. Oh, that reminds me of this kid. I had a right... Okay. So we have some of that original. looks like a... So there's some beaded up stuff still. And again, I don't know if that's from, ooh. Do you guys see my camera doing that? Or is it just my, on my screen? Did you see that? But the pink, like the red, excuse me, that I put down, doesn't it look like it's beating up? Is that from the, ooh boy, that's bad news. My camera obviously doesn't like this texture. Sorry, guys. That's strange. So definitely more random. I'm curious about that pink, though. Why it's beating up like that. Like, why it's, like, beat it up. We need some more. We need some more layers on that bad boy. But I'm really liking what this. I'm really liking that one. Sorry for my camera. That's really strange. I don't know why my camera. Excuse me. I got the hiccups. While right, it's doing that, I'm gonna start with uh, some cream. This time. Let's see what happens. That that Adirondack. I mean, this pink, that's not from the, I mean, we use some picked raspberry of Distress Oxide, but this is, has to be the Adirondack pad, the raisin. Look, it's still, it has to be the raisin. That it would still be coming through this far, like this far. Words, Paula. After, you know, how many ever many pulls, we're still getting the Adirondack off the plate? 
little red over there. And I guess tonight I'm a little bit lucky. It's it's it rained today and it rained all day yesterday, so it's definitely humid in my room. So I do have a little bit more open working time, I suppose. I feel out of control jelly plating this way without doing my controlled crusty bits. I feel out of control. Let's see. So I'm going to take this stencil again. This time I'll add a little bit of black. Let me see. If I put a black here instead on my paper, which would have been better if I put it on my nonstick mat, would have been smarter. Making a mess. Making a mess. Put this on this way. See what happens. Again, this this might have been something Jean cut out for me. I forget where where that is from, or if that's a stencil from like Hobby Lobby or something. All right, so I've got that. Let's see. Let us find one of the texture things I got going on. Oh, I haven't used these in a long time. What are these called again, my friends? Oh, I forgot I had these bad boys. These plates. Oh, where's Eileen when you need her? I forgot about these plates. Were they sold at Joggles? I don't can't remember where I got them. This was before the art foamies. We all bought all these plates before canyon river texture plates thank you pam that was barb our wonderful barb owen of let's get creative here on youtube i can remember it was barb i think that originally made me buy them anyways i believe it was her because that's something to do with 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 uh, her quilting and then i think she used them on her plate i could be wrong hi melody oh thank you the face and the puppy one. Oh, you know what? Jelly plates. Like, like I, I've talked about things in my art room over the years, right? Of all the crafty things I've bought and whatever. Like, I've definitely this tool, the jelly plate tool, is definitely the one I've used the most over the years. You know, when you think of things like my cinch or melting pot or uh, what else do I got going on over here? Well, no, anything. <laughs> well, maybe other than my heat gun, but it is it is a good investment. I'm just going to pull half of it down here. Pull some from up here. Is this more than one sheet of paper? No. Or was it jean first? Yeah, they were they were using for fabric, I remember. They were they're cool. That's an interesting slice of something. With the Shiva oil sticks. Yes, I have some of those bad boys somewhere too. Little guys. I never did get any uh, the art for me. Only art for me I have is this, but the one from Julie Faye Fan Balzer. Make art, make art every chance you get, baby. Is what it says. Even though it's a Canadian company. Ooh, yummo! Are you ready? Oh, look at this, my friends! Look at that. We've got. And, that, and see, this is the beauty of Monoprint. I will never be able to get this to re, to repeat this because we have some, I mean, we still have the raisin. I call it red cranberry. But there is definitely a tint still left from that raisin. 
Yum. Oh, I love what's going on here. Sorry, I'm not even showing the camera. I'm just looking at it myself. <laughs> oh, sweet goodness. That's terrible. Interesting. Lots of fun texture on here. Lots of fun texture. Let's see what it pulls on the jelly on the deli paper, which is different, right? Because deli paper is not as absorbent. This card stuff. Art homies. Let's see what happens here. Oh, see, it didn't, you know. I, and I and I have noticed that over the years. Some my favorite jelly, like if I'm doing my crusty bit technique. My favorite ones are on white card or cardstock, anyways. It's harder to see on the jelly, on the deli paper. Still some fun stuff. Ooh, my camera doesn't want to. Let's see if I put it down there. Very cool. I need to obviously bray over stencils more often on my jelly plate. Let's try it with something different. I have uh, this is Crafters Workshop, one of our one of my favorite. And that there's still some stuff left on here. You see, there's crusty bits. There's crusty bits on there. So I'm gonna put this mask down. I do have the reverse. So this is the mask, and I and there is a stencil of it as well. But I don't know where it is. Well, I guess I could dig through this, but I'm not going to. I'm going to put this on my plate, and then I'm going to bray over some black. A little black, a little blue. These are Liquitex Basics. Kind of bit of green. See if we can. KP just bought art for me. So they are now made. Oh, really, Patty? Hi, by the way. Get out. Interesting. So it's not a Canadian company anymore. That KP, she's awesome, though. Interesting. Welcome to How Not to Jelly Plate. Now we're actually I'm actually I'm I'm pretty excited tonight. I've had some good results. I'm happy with what's going on. Got some crusty bits there. I'm gonna take this over here. Let me see. Let us see if I take a little bit off. Take a little bit off. KP's the one that makes up. What's the company called, Patty, that makes your rubber stamps? Why can't I remember? Drink. Yeah, Kristen Powers. Rubber Moon. Kristen Powers from Rubber Moon. But we always know her online as KPPEA. Hey, Kathy. You do? Patty has a line of art phobies coming out later this month. Oh, 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 I got it. As in, as in June, Patty? Because May is almost... I suppose done. It's almost. Oh, here I am chatting away and not picking up some of this dark. Too much dark over here. That's exciting. Oh, I need to save my money. Because you know our Patty's going to come up with some like pictograph art for me or something that I am just absolutely going to have to have. Just thinking of what color to pull this with. Well, first let's dry it.
<laughs> okay, so end of June. Okay. <laughs> Hair dryer. Oh, I'm excited. Some PTP art things. I'll make sure this is somewhat dry. Let's see, what other color do I have over here? Is Titan Buff. Here's something fun. Let's try this. Liquid text concentrated acrylic article. Fluorescent acrylic artist color, medium viscosity, fluorescent orange. Let's pull it with that. Make a muddy mess. Oh. Hold the fort. Four, three, two, one. Earthy. I, it's in my head, my friends. It's in my head. I know I can't sing, but <laughs> I can't play the music. It's copyright, but I can sing it. Hi, <laughs> Dana. Let me lose every vision, every viewer going. <laughs> the countdown starts. Do, 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 do. We're looking, we're looking uh, Halloween over here. Oh, this is going to be muddy. I can tell already. Let us add a little bit of white. Where is my white paint? Right here. Not the day. So, Kathy, before I, I before I started, I was telling my story about. I was watching the SpaceX today, and that was super inspiring and and wonderful to watch, which got me remi reminded me of one of my favorite '80s songs, which is uh, uh, Major Tom. But but it's 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 Major Tom by what is his name? Peter. It's the '80s version, not the Bowie version. So I I listened to the '80s for like my favorite song, one of my favorite songs. Which led me to the Bowie version, which I researched about what it meant to him, and, uh, and then I listened to all the other songs of Major Tom, and then which got me to, which led me to Chris Hatfield's, who is a Canadian astronaut, um, version of uh, Space Odyssey. So uh, then I listened to his TED talks. What, what an afternoon! I just went from one thing to another. I learned a lot. It was so inspiring. But yeah, the Bowie, so I learned a little bit about Bowie today. <laughs> I learned about Chris Hap, a little bit about Chris Hatfield today. But the song I like the most is, is well, I shouldn't say I like the most. The, the one that, that I have a memory of, or as our, you know, one of a friend Linda Berry would say that gives me an image would be the uh, Major Tom By. What is his name? Peter Schilling. Major Tom Coming Home by Peter Schilling. That's that's what I'm humming in my head. But I had a great time listening to Major Tom and then his other song. You know, I really, like I said, I was on a rabbit trail today that led me to, and it was wonderful to, to listen to Chris Hadfield you know, talk about, I was, it was in a, like a TED talk or, or something, but talk about how he had, you know, how he wanted to bring the arts into space, right? So it was important to him to play music to, or to, to create the first, he created a, the first music video in space, but also to take pictures, right? His book. I wanted to, now I want to buy his, buy his book. So inspiring. 
No, we have absolutely. What happened to my tree? The tree is gone. So I wonder, like, when you're. So on these prints, right? When I brayered over that stencil, that stencil is actually really, really thin, right? The Crafters Workshop stencils that I used with this, you know, when I brayered over the tree there, you can barely see it anymore, but they're super thick. I completely lost the tree. Oh, I'm sure you've heard the, the 80s version. Oh, I can, I can play about, what, 10 seconds before? So, well, no, I've got haters. Somebody be reporting my videos. But it, but his song, the Peter Schilling one, Coming Home, Major Tom Coming Home, it's, you know, four, three, two, one. <laughs> yeah, twisty, fun, floating, everybody's <laughs> subscribing. <laughs> oh, man, we need, <laughs> I need to, I need to sniff some citrus salt before that. Yeah, interesting, Kathy. Like, uh, well, I have to show you some of the things that I thought, but I really, so I was, I, you know, the uh, Space Odyssey, which led into the other songs and progression till this fine, you know, anyway, it was, it was very interesting what I learned about uh, and who Major Tom is to him and all that interesting and why Chris Hatfield changed the lyrics uh, for his version. Anyway, that was my... Uh, now, do I want to try that again? Why did I lose all the black? I mean, still, that was an interesting print. I really like it. But cannot see. Let me just see. Ooh, that is. Uh... The countdown starts. The 80s music. Ah, it's in my head. Okay, we got it. <laughs> I have to do another one. Let's do white as the first layer because we don't usually do white as our first layer. And because it's right here, maybe it has something to do with that liquid text orange because it, nor does any of that show, show up orange. I guess there's a little bit of orange in it, but the fluorescent colors, I guess, are tricky business. All right, a little bit of blue. I'm just going to use the colors that are around me here. I hope you guys are having a good night. Like I said, I, I had a headache all day, so I just needed some jelly plate time. You know, the things that are going on in the world, everything. I just need to... Ooh, making a mess over here. I need a mindful, mindless little bit of arty fun. Let us see. What else do I have over here? Ooh, who remembers this? I haven't used that in a while. This is a, a, a big piece of foam from the Dollarama. Might not be. There's a lot of paint on that plate. They're not gonna be able to. It's not taking up a lot of it. All right. Let's find a different stencil. We'll go back to this one. This I think it's called Sacred Geometry. I believe it's a crafters or student artist seller stencil. It is artist seller. This is ACS 043L. All right. Let's see if I put the black this time. No idea what I'm doing. Oh yeah, that that turned out well, Paula. Oh, perfect. All right, I need to. How exciting was it to watch the? Making a mess. Oh, 
making some texture. Take a little bit of it off. This one we were working with, I'm just going to do add a little bit to the edge of this. I don't know if that did anything nice. Put this down. I'm just lifting quickly because I just want the texture in some spots. Now I'm going to let this dry. No, we're trying to do it. We're trying to do it not my way. Not my crusty bits. I'm trying to work differently. Let's see. I'll go back to my... Add more of the green. Do I have dyeing? Absolutely have some PBOs. Of course you made me buy those PBO Dyna colors, Patty. I have lots. Probably all of them. Well, my, oh, I should take that back. I take that back because there's probably colors from the last, I don't know how long, that I don't have. But I do. I have them right behind, right behind me. I'll dry this and pull it with a PBO. Dyna. I actually haven't used one in a long time. That'll be fun. Let's see. And because the, my good old Simon put the paint cart together and I, I got it in here, I can have them close. Iridescent blue, green, iridescent orange, yellow, iridescent violet blue. I have more than one of those bad boys. I guess I like that color. Iridescent blue, black. Iridescent green, yellow. We'll use the one that I have a lot of. All right, let's try this. I'm coming home. Dang it, I wish I could play music, but can't, can't. Hair dryer. I totally forgot about all the videos. <laughs> My hands are dirty tonight. Thank you. So today is what? Day number 26? Twenty-seven days in a row of going live. Pretty proud of myself, I must admit. All right, so we get some PBO for the pickup print. I've got my papers here. <laughs> Let's see, we've got some extra crusty, crusty bits. So I haven't used this paint in a, <clears throat> a bit. No problems coming out though. God, this is for those in the crowd that haven't 
This is PBO Studio Acrylics High Viscosity Dyna Color D Y N A. This one is an iridescent blue violet. All right, got a nice even layer. There's oh, I didn't put any PTP Goldie bits on tonight. All right, what time is it? So in Animal Crossing, tomorrow, I have Elvis moving in. He is a lion, but he is, you know, mirrored after the Elvis Presley character. So I can't look forward to it, to Elvis tomorrow. My beardo moved out. Well, it's like bear do, beer, like it, it's pronounced, it, it's spelled B-E-R-D-O, but I always say beardo because he's got a beard. <laughs> it's probably beardo, like bear do. Anyways, Animal Crossing, I still love it. I'm giving it a massage. Ooh, maybe I put too much on. It's a deli paper. All right, this is a cardstock. Give it a nice, and I, you know, it depends on how many layers of paint you have, right? I'm really giving it a good massage, so all those layers of paint have a chance to sink into the paper. All right, let's take a peek down here. Uh, not all of it's coming up, which could be because, you know, some of the layers, the, the first couple layers I put down, I didn't dry in between, so I can't expect it to come up if the paint wasn't dry. This could be interesting. Ooh, my friends. Oh, I don't even want. Oh, I love it. Look at this. I don't even want to pull the other one up. I just want to admire that for a moment while I take a sip of my iced tea. Oh, I don't know if it's the colors or the things. I don't know what, but I am loving this. I definitely, I don't know what it is. And again, like I'm a self-taught artist, so I don't know the all the characteristics and properties of paint and stuff. But when I use student grade acrylics or, or higher on my, on my jelly plate, I don't know. I just find I get a nicer print than when craft paint, craft paint, because craft paint's matte, right? So it looks dull. So maybe that's why it looks galaxy like, doesn't it Patty? That's why I think I love it so much. I'm coming home. Dun, dun, dun. All right, let's wait. We got the other one still over here. Everybody ready? <laughs> thanks, Jane's got some spots. Oh, thanks, Melody. Let's see what we got over here. A little bit muddier. A little bit muddier. Well, the muddy's not the right word. I like what's going on over here. Um. Oh. So you can just barely see that stencil, the original, the original stencil. Some down here a little bit. The artist seller. Come on. Won't focus. Maybe if I put my elbows down, it's not focusing. Mm -mm -mm. Nope. It doesn't want to show you. It doesn't want to. And it's hard to tell that it's there's even any of the, you know, iridescence from the PBO. But, but that blue, again, that blue is um, Liquitex Basics. I like what's going on there. I love this. It's so interesting how we... Well, I guess because on that side of the plate, I had blue where I didn't have it on this side. I love what's going on here, but this one, this one's 
This one's speaking to me. This one's speaking to me. And maybe all this one needs is a little bit more blue. Why don't we layer something on it? Let's see. I'm just going to take that same stencil. I'm going to try to put down some of the... It's primary blue, Liquitex Basics primary blue that's in... That we see there. <clears throat> Oh my, I got, I got, I have paint absolutely everywhere. And this blue is, is translucent. May have a little bit of black over here, maybe. A little bit of blue. Oh, I definitely will. Yeah, I'll post a photo. Once my camera, that's one good thing. Like my camera, I have a Huawei. It's one under. I always have to remember which one it is. I remember now because Kathy's got one above me, Kathy Arbor, the Huawei P30. I have the P20, which has a, a pretty fancy camera on it. Take some really good pictures for a phone, anyways. No, not for a phone. For anything. It, it takes better pictures than any other camera I got going. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to take this. Let's see. I like what's going on up here. So I'll put something a little bit down here. Just lightly. Making a mess. Take some from there. I'm going to put the... Let's see. So we got this Halloween looking one. Ooh, some interesting crusty bits coming up on that in that corner. Oh my, let me look at a little. One of my wonderful friends made me this. I believe it was Julia. She cut it out with her, uh, one of the die cutting machines. I'm going to add more blue. Where is it? Can't find it. There it is. She made this for me uh, a long time ago. And it got, look, it got stuck in my thing. I'm making some, uh, oh, this one's going to be grungy. But we shall pick it. I'm going to dry it, and then we'll pick it up with the uh, uh, the PBO. I wanted to say medium magenta, but it's not. Iridescent violet blue. What am I doing? So used to picking up my heat gun. Hair dryer. How you watch me to use that? Green blue. I can put some ice with a green blue. Sorry, it's loud. My hands are always so dirty because I'm constantly touching my plate to see if it's dry. <laughs> All right. Patty says the blue green blue PBO, which I think is different than the blue green. This is blue green. I think there's two, right? Green blue and blue green. No yellow blue. Maybe not. We're using this one. If there was a different color, uh, I'm going to actually, 
I'll put some down. I'll add a little bit of the purple up there. First. Yum. Oh, I can see the iridescence. My apologies for my camera auto-focusing. Or I, I shall say thank you for watching. Even though there's a camera auto-focusing. <laughs> oh, it's not funny. All right, I'm going to take... Let's What other... Ooh, one of Tim Holtz. Unboxing folders. Then I'm going to put cardstock down, see what we get. I do, after I added that, I do like what's going on here. We can look at that. I do like the grunginess of this. You live it, you're getting ready for work. Living by kerosene. Hope you have a good night at work. Or Jerry, maybe it's the day for you. I'm saying it's night, maybe it's a day. All right, take a peek, see if it's coming off. It is. Look at this. Whoa. Again, only a peak a, a peak of the peach. Come on. It's fun what that texture did from the embossing folder. I surely had a lot of black in that corner. Let's see. My camera doesn't like metallics, I don't think. It's night you're in Colorado. Very nice. I like the... I mean, the alphabet's backwards, right? Or is it? No, yeah, my B is back. Well, maybe not. Maybe if I turn it around this way. No, it's backwards. Very interesting. So it's, like I said, tonight a little bit different than the normal way that I uh, jelly plate. Let's see. We did a lot. Let's put this to the side for a moment. We played with some sprays. I still don't quite. Oh, I forgot about a crusty bit. Let's go and do a little review. We started off with the way that I like to my crusty bit technique. The way I like to start with the three layers dried in between. So we started this one first, way too much black, but I really like how it turned out. This was black, brilliant purple, and then silver as a pickup. So lots of fun. Yeah. Oh, you worked the midnight shift. Awesome. I used to always, I worked midnights for a long time, straight. I worked the midnight shift when I was in Minneapolis, actually. And North Tunnel, North Tonawanda. So there was that crusty bit. My camera's not uh, focusing properly. We also did some cleanup prints. At the, well, when I say clean up this time, they were literally I was just trying to clean my plate off. <laughs> All the crusty bits. We have some texture there. Some fun stuff. I love how this, this definitely turned out differently. We used some sprays. That was my first attempt with the Distress uh, Pad. Distress Oxide Pad. What I didn't spray, I didn't like brayer it out. Lots of white on that side. So again, lots of... This isn't my favorite print, but I like what's going on on this side. All 
I enjoyed that. So remember, we added a little bit there. This is a second layer, but that's off the first pull. First pull of that one. When we just did. Another one we just did. Like Debbie. Oh, that's right. Bless you for sure, my friend. It's a hard job. I really like this one. This is my favorite one of the night. And I don't know if it's because of the, you know, like Patty said, it looks like a galaxy. I don't know, but that's my favorite. My favorite. A little bit of something here. It looks like I already outlined. Look how dark it is there. It looks like I outlined it already. A little bit of something. Oh, I like this one too. We added this part second, but I definitely like what's going on here. I do like that one. Our one of our first one with the Raggedy Ann or Raggedy Andy, depending which one. Thank you so much for being here. All right. And then that was the first one. Oh, and this was the first one too of my with. My normal, just normal crusty bit technique. We have some, whatchamacallit, deli paper that I use. But we definitely have some fun prints on the deli paper. This, that orange, I, now that I think about it, anytime I've tried to use that fluorescent orange didn't turn out so well. I'll have to find other prints where I've tried to use that before. And we also did some with, there's a couple layers on that one with the Distress Oxide Spray. You can see some of the texture down there. And it was definitely beating on, beating on the plate. So again, Distress Oxide. It'll be interesting adding gesso in different layers to this. This is when I brayered it, but it wasn't just a stress oxide that I added. It was this raisin, the old Adirondack pad that really. So that's interesting. We're going to have to work, work, work on this. We also had a little a pull from that. Again, this, this stress oxide, but I didn't move it around my plate. I didn't brayer it. I just stamped it down and then. There's some splots after after aftermarket splots. And this one too. But I also sprayed some distress day sprains on them. Distress spray stains on them as well. So in like two hours, my friend, I my friends, I definitely produced a lot more prints than I normally do, just doing my regular, you know, the other night when we did our crusty bits like this. Uh, so, it, you know, completely different way of jelly printing. More intentional. My, my, my crusty bits is more of an intentional way. But have fun tonight. I have some cool stuff, I think, some cool starts and things to do. I truly appreciate everybody being here. I said I had a headache all day. I wasn't feeling, you know, but I had a good night. I truly, you guys put me in a great mood. I truly appreciate every one of you being here. That raisin definitely showed up in a lot. A raisin Adirondack showed up in a lot of different prints. And I need, like Cheryl said, I need to get it like a, some type of rope <laughs> so I can hang up my papers to dry as I'm working on them because it's humid in here so there's not a lot but thank you so much for being here my friends i had a lot of fun tonight i have some good prints and fun things that i feel like i can uh, work with in the future which is always good we had some fails we had some pauses it was a good night Except for my singing. <laughs> that might be the worst part. <laughs> Anyways, go check out. <laughs> go check out Major Tom for yourself. 
Uh, I'll tweet Chris Hadfield's TED Talk. I really enjoyed that about uh, what happened when, during a spacewalk when you couldn't see for a bit. It was it was really inspiring. But thank you so much. Patty, are you streaming tomorrow, my friend? Patty Tolly Pears. Thank you, Laura. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Shauna. Thanks, Jane, Cheryl, Elizabeth, other Cheryl, Gail, Miko. Well, about Miko, wonderful to see you, my friend, by the way. I'm back to my regular Wednesdays and Saturdays. I stream every day. Today is day number 26. Did I say 26? Of me going live every day um, in a row. Uh, but I don't have a time for when I when I go live. It really, it's just all whenever I feel like it, to be honest, or whatever is the best time for me. <laughs> but on I am back to my schedule of Wednesday and Saturday nights at nine thirty p.m. Eastern time. Thank you, Cheryl. So wonderful to see you. All right, Patty Tolly Parish here on YouTube. It's going to be in the evening. All right. Check out check out that. I'm excited. I shall be there. What day is it tomorrow? Sun, Sunday. All day. All right. Thank you so much, my friends. I truly appreciate you being here. I'll see you tomorrow. Much love.